Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth that is given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, but given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints in the room. The sins watching in on the camera, the saints that couldn't make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. They say we still glitching, but we got to push through this now. Uh, this is uh, uh, this is uh, our Sabbath study. So we're getting back to our regular Sabbath, Sabbath study. Earlier today, we went over the book of Job. We didn't even get through half of that thing, boy. There's a lot more we got to get through, but you know what I'm saying? We got through uh, the book of Job, y'all willing. Next week on the on the seventh day of unleavened bread, we'll finish it out. Uh, that'll be on Thursday. Uh, y'all willing? We'll we'll finish out the book of Job. Um, that's just another thing that you know y'all can have video that y'all can refer to and watch. Um, uh, uh, you know, just opening up the book of Job. Y'all willing? We'll be able to get through the whole book um, again, right? Uh, this will be the whole book again with. I say good audio, but clearly we we glitching now. But a, a whole book again with good audio, um, with decent video. Some of our older coverings of the book. Um, sometimes it's not as clear, not as consistent. So God willing, we'll be able to get through it and get the people good teaching. Uh, put everything in one playlist that everybody can refer back to it. Be able to read through the Bible in chronological order with videos to go along with it. All right. The whole goal is to make sure that the people understand the book. I don't want y'all to understand what people be saying. I don't want y'all to understand these lies these people tell. Understand the book, right? Understand how to discern a lie for yourself. Why? Because we understand the book. There's nothing above the most high God will. Right? So let's uh let's recap what we went over last week, right? Last week we dealt with uh <clears throat> last week we dealt with um uh in the book of Ezra, right? So you have the rubble. And then you also had uh, Yahushua, right? And um, and when I say Yahushua, I'm talking about uh, Joshua, right? So you had Zerubbabel and you had Joshua. Joshua was the high priest in our land when we went back. Zerubbabel was like a governor, right? But Zerubbabel, you know what I'm saying, as the governor, you know what I'm saying, he kind of was calling the shots. So we began to build the foundation, right? of our uh temple because you know king of babylon had our temple destroyed completely we out of the land a lot of us out of the land for 70 years others out of the land for a shorter period of time but still too long of a time we finally back in the land the priests mostly came back helped us build back up the temple everybody is excited and everybody living in their houses but we got stopped right we started to build we got stopped remember the gentiles came through it's the Gentiles that 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 live in Samaria, right? And they was looking, they came through and they looking like, uh, we'll help you because we serve the same God as you. And we looked at them, we was like, nah, we're not, we're not going with this. Y'all ain't got nothing to do with this. This is what we told them. We said, Y'all ain't got nothing to do with this. Right? And so the reason was is because remember the priest wasn't even letting Israelites come through unless they could they could prove that they had a tie back to the Levites. So we had making remember our own people say, look. Tell me who your daddy was and tell me who his daddy was. And we were trying to figure it out. So if you didn't tie back, we wasn't going to do it. So when these people start messing with us, we stopped the work, right? Until the prophets came. Remember, we read the book of Haggai last week. We read a little bit of, Ze uh, not Zephaniah, a little bit of uh, Zechariah, right? And the prophets came and they told us the Most High God said, go ahead and start building again, right? And so we're going to end up building again based off of the, what we're hearing from the prophets. So last week we left off on Haggai. Remember, Haggai told us a whole lot of stuff, right? But one of the things Haggai was trying to teach us was about how the clean, cleanliness laws work. And he was letting us know that we're like this unclean thing, right? We're like this unclean thing. And when we get touched by something that's clean, that don't make us clean. Rather, we make the clean thing unclean, right? 
that's what the most high God was trying to, you know, communicate to us. So now uh, let's go into uh, Zechariah. Let's start off at Zechariah chapter uh, seven. I mean, uh, Zechariah chapter one, verse seven. It's Zechariah chapter one, verse seven. Upon the four and twentieth day of the eleventh month, which is the month of Sabbath, in the second year of, Dar of Darius came the word of Yahuwah unto Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Iddo, the prophet, saying, I saw by night, and behold, a man riding upon a red horse. And he said, right, so This is a man, he is riding upon a red horse. What else? And he stood among the myrtle trees that were in the bottom. Mm -hmm. And behind him were where there were three were and behind him were the red were their red horses speckled in white. Then said I, Oh my lord. Where you at? Zachariah. One I'm on one nine now. Keep going. Then said I, Oh my lord, what are these? And the angel that talked with me said unto me, I will show thee what these be. And the man that stood among the myrtle trees answered and said, these are they whom Yahuwah has sent to walk to and fro through the earth. Right? We just read about that in the book of Job earlier today, right? Uh, how uh, Satan walked to and fro throughout the earth. That means back and forth. So this, these are who, who sent them? Yahuwah. Yahuwah sent these other spirits, right? That now they being seen as horsemen. Right? One speckled, one red. To and fro throughout the earth. Keep going. Watch this. And they answered the angel of Yahuwah that stood among the myrtle trees and said, We have walked to and fro through the earth, and behold, all the earth sitteth still and is at rest. All right, he said, We look, we didn't been back and forth throughout all the earth, and the whole earth is at peace. Pay attention. And they answered the angel of Yahuwah that stood among the myrtle trees and said, We have walked to and fro of all the earth, and behold, the earth sitteth still and is at rest. And the angel of Yahuwah answered and said, O Yahuwah of hosts, how long wilt thou not have mercy on Jerusalem and on the cities of Judah against which you have indignation these 70 years? And Yahuwah answered the angel that talked with me with good words and comfortable words. So the angel that communed with me said, said unto me, cry thou, saying thus says Yahuwah of hosts. I am jealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with a great jealousy, and I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease. For I was but a little displeased, and they helped forward the affliction. Therefore, right, so now the Most High God is letting us know. He's saying, listen, I'm upset, right, with the people that helped, the Gentiles that helped with my judgment. He's like, man, I was a little mad at y'all. But they, I mean, they, they was happy to carry out the judgment. These, bo these boys was like falling all over each other to carry out their judgment. I wanted to punish y'all, but man, I ain't never seen the people so happy, right? Looking at the Gentile, everybody wanted us to be punished, right? So the Most High God said, well, I'm not happy with that. I, ain't, I don't like the fact that they liked it so much, right? Watch this. Keep going. Therefore, thus says Yahuwah, I am returned to Jerusalem with mercies. My house shall be built in it. Says you who of hosts, and the and a line shall be stretched forth upon Jerusalem. You still there? Did I leave? I think I lost him. Oh, I don't know what happened. All right, like you back now. I don't know what happened there. Yeah, you disappeared. Can you hear me? Yeah, you cut out at verse 17. All right. Cry yet, saying, Thus says you who have hosts, my cities through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad, and Yahuwah shall yet comfort Zion and shall yet choose Jerusalem. Then lift I up mine eyes and saw, and behold, four horns. 
And I said unto the angel that talked with me, what be these? And he answered, these are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Yahuwah showed me four carpenters. Then said I, what come these to do? Hold on. He said, these are the horns that have scattered Judah. What? That have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Right? Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Right? There's four horns. And he says that these are the four horns that have scattered them. And there's a couple different ways we could look at this, right? I'm not in the, you know what I'm saying? If, if, if we can use the book to define book, we'll do it. This is not one I've completely figured out yet, right? But there's a couple different ways you could look at it. A horn, we already know, we're going to learn from uh, Revelations that the horn represents a kingdom, right? It represents a kingdom, right? And then usually the horn has a body, Right. And that body represents either a system or like a, a either a system or it represents like a nation of people. Right. So you have certain kingdoms that comes out of nations of people. So this is saying that there's four horns. It's not attaching these horns to one specific nation of people. So one of my theories is this is four horns from totally different nations. Right. Totally different nations of people, totally different systems. Right. But all of these horns, what they have in common is they scattered our people. Right. So these are four horns that scattered our people. I, I personally believe that this is talking about the transatlantic uh, slave trade. But, you know, what I'm saying it's, it's hard to say. I can't prove it out with the book. Keep going. And one of you smart brothers know, you know, what I'm saying I got a theory on this. I'd love to talk about it. Go ahead and send it over to me. These are the horns which have scattered Judah, so that no man did lift up his head. Wait, and, he, and the Lord showed me four carpenters. Then said I, what come these to do? And he spake, saying, these are the horns which have scattered Judah, so that no man did lift up his head. But these are come to fray them, to cast out the horns of the Gentiles, which lift up their horn over the land of Judah to scatter it. I lift up my eyes again and looked and behold, a man with a measuring line in his hand. Then said right, so I, when you say measuring line, that's talking, you remember we talked about the plumbing line? I think it was, what was that, Amos, somebody? You know what I'm saying? We talked about the plumbing line, the measuring line, it basically just showing that measure. And that means that, mean that some anything that's not right is getting tore down. That's pretty much whenever you say the plumbing line or the measuring line, that's what he's talking about. Anything that's not right is getting tore down. Right. So you look at it, you make sure it's like, OK, that fit the measurements. Good. But just like if you were to take a piece of wood and then nail it to the wall, then after you nail it to the wall, you check your measurement and you say it's not right. What you got to do? You got to pop that thing out the wall. Right. Everything got to come down. So this is what he's looking at for the measuring line. Keep going. Watch this. Then said I, where the goest thou? And he said unto me, Measure Jerusalem and to see what the breadth thereof and what is the length thereof. And behold, the angel that talked with me went forth, and another angel went out to meet him and said unto him, Run, speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls for the multitude of men and cattle therein. Right. So he's telling us that there will be a time that we will have towns and we won't need we won't have use of walls. Right. We'll be towns without walls. Because of so many people. Right? He's talking about our second return. He's talking about when we return, just as when we went with Egypt. Right? But this time he's gonna bring us from all countries, the books say. Right? Keep going. Watch this. For I saith, for I saith Yahuwah will be unto her a wall of fire round about and will be the glory in the midst of her. Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north, says Yahuwah, for I have spread you abroad as the four winds of heaven, says Yahuwah. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. For thus says Yahuwah of hosts, after the glory has, have he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you. For he that touches you touches the apple of his eye. For behold, I will shake my hand upon them, and they shall be a spoil to their servants, and ye shall know that Yahuwah of hosts has sent me. 
Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for lo, I come, and I dwell in the midst of thee, says Yahuwah. And many nations I dwell in the midst of thee, says Yahuwah. Keep going. And many nations shall be joined unto Yahuwah in that day, and shall be my people, and I will dwell in the midst of thee, and thou shalt know that Yahuwah of hosts has sent me unto thee. And Yahuwah shall inherit Judah his portion in this holy land, and shall choose Jerusalem again. Be silent, O all flesh, before Yahuwah, for he is raised up out of his holy habitation. So um, this is how Yahushua talks. A lot of times when you get to the Gospels, you'll hear, hear him say how um, Yahuwah has sent me, right? I only come, I come to do the will of the one who sent me. Um, and uh, the one who sent me, that's the doctrine that I, that I, that I, um, like, if you know, if you know, if you know of the doctrine, then you'll know that he is the one who sent me, right? You know, Yahuwah's doctrine, you'll know he's the one who sent me. So this is that this is exactly what uh Yahushua was alluding to every time he speaks as the one that that Yah sends, right? So this is what he's gonna do uh, for Jerusalem and Judah about around the time of revelations when he starts to come back and when we get back into our land. But uh this is a perfect depiction of uh Yahushua speaking right here, Zechariah. You wanna get to chapter three? Mm -hmm. From the Bible, but yeah. It's, it's used multiple times in the Bible. He asked about the term apple of my eye. Is that where, you know what I'm saying? People got that phrase from. Got it from the Bible. Um, yeah, let's let's keep going. That's chapter three. Oh, wait, hold on. We might miss something. This is chapter three. Yeah. So one more thing. What did he what did he what did he send there? Read uh what's the last verse? Thirteen. Thirteen? Give me uh what I want. Thirteen. Give me, give me, give me ten. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for lo, I come, and I will dwell in the midst of thee, says Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. and many nations shall be joined to Yahuwah in that day, and shall be my people. And I will dwell in the midst of thee, and thou shalt know that Yahuwah of hosts has sent me unto thee. And Yahuwah mm -hmm. shall inherit Judah his portion in the holy land, and shall choose Jerusalem again. Be silent, O our flesh, before Yahuwah, for he is raised up out of his holy habitation. Okay, keep going. I thought it was right there, but I might, I might be mistaken. And he showed me Yahushua, the high priest, standing before the angel of Yahuwah, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. Mm -hmm. And Yahuwah said unto Satan, Yahuwah rebuked thee, O Satan. Right? So Yahuwah says unto Satan, Yahuwah rebuked thee. All right? Keep going. Even Yahuwah that has chosen Jerusalem rebu rebuked thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with a change of raiment. And I said, right, So right here, Zechariah is prophesying. He's using the, the high priest Joshua to, to, uh, to give a picture of the uh, new covenant. Right? Keep going. And I said, let them set a fair mitre upon his head. So they set a fair mitre upon his head and clothed him with garments. And the angel of Yahuwah stood by. The angel of Yahuwah protested unto Joshua, saying, Thus says Yahuwah of hosts, If thou wilt walk in my ways, and if thou wilt keep my charge, then thou shalt also judge my house, and shalt also keep my courts, and I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. Hear now, O Joshua the high priest, Thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are men wondered, wondered at. For behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. For behold. He said, I will bring forth who? My servant, the branch. Why does that make sense? The branch. Isaiah told us about the root of Jesse. The root of Jesse, exactly. Right? Who else talked to us about it? Uh, right? Y'all don't remember Ezekiel? Let's grab Ezekiel. It's Ezekiel chapter 4, verse 29. Uh, no, I'm sorry, not 4. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 29. It's Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 29. Watch what Ezekiel say.
and I will raise up for them a plant of renown, and they shall be no more. Well, that's, that's exactly what I want, but no, nah, I need before that. Yeah, if that's 29, give me verse 19. And as for my flock, they eat that which you have trodden with your feet, and they drink that which you have fouled with your feet. Therefore, that's I remember this. We talked, remember when we read Ezekiel, and Ezekiel was telling us about the pastors, about the shepherds that didn't that didn't get a sheep good food, right? They gave them the muddy water. Right? Let's read it again. Watch this. Therefore, thus says Yahuwah God unto them, Behold, I, even I, will judge between the fat cattle and between the lean cattle. Mm -hmm. Because you have thrust with side and with shoulder and pushed all the disease with your horns till you have scattered them abroad. Therefore will I save my flock and they shall no more be a prey and I will judge between cattle and cattle. And I will set up one shepherd over them and he shall feed them, even my servant David. He shall feed he said, them. I will set up one shepherd over them. It'll be one shepherd. Right? Right now, you might have leaders all over the place. You go to this church, some people go to multiple churches and watch stuff online. They listening and getting being led by 17 different people. They got 17 different brothers. Right? Yeah, they, they are part of they are part of two camps. They go to one congregation in person. You know what I'm saying? And they watch a couple, you know what I'm saying, a couple couple videos online. Right? Brother, we got so many and I'm not saying that's not, I'm not I'm not necessarily saying it's not, it's dangerous, right? I'm gonna tell you it's dangerous because it ain't a lot of people telling truth. So if you feel like you got, if you feel like you got 17 people teaching you the truth, you know what I'm saying? It's probably something wrong. You know, it's probably so. Trust me, all of them probably lying to you, but at least one of them got to be lying, right? Because the truth is not out there like that. Yeah, I haven't come across it. You know what I'm saying? It's one congregation in Dallas, the only one I vouch for in my entire life you know what i'm saying my entire history there's only one congregation that i vouch for and i've been to a lot of these boys i've listened to a lot of these boys right so a lot of y'all you know what i'm saying y'all got all these people that y'all listen to but that don't necessarily you know what i'm saying don't that sounds sketchy to me is what i would say but in theory there's nothing wrong with having a bunch of teachers in the conditions that we are right now right we separated from our teachers and we all trying to just kind of get back to what the truth is. We don't have no prophet. A lot of people call themselves prophets, but we don't have no real prophet and we don't have no real uh, apostle to, to, to guide us back to the truth. So we got to kind of figure this out. So it's, it's appropriate in theory to have this guy who's an expert at this and this guy who's an expert at this. And we all just kind of work together to build back up. Right. But in when the most high God come back here, when he send his son back here. He said, I'm going to send one shepherd, right, of David. He said, I'm going to send one shepherd, right, and everybody going to follow that one shepherd. Keep going. Watch this. Even my servant David, he shall feed them and shall be their shepherd. And I, Yahuwah, will be their God and my servant David, a prince among them. I, Yahuwah, have spoken it. And I will make with them, I will make with them a covenant of peace and will cause the evil beast to cease out of the land. This right, so this is talking about the new covenant again, right? So he's saying he's going to send his servant, David, right? And he's going to make a new covenant. It's going to be a covenant of peace, he called it. Keep going. They shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. And I will Right, so now you remember when Zechariah said, look, they ain't even going to have no walls because of how many people. This is how we're going to be able to get away with not having walls because there's going to be an agreement of peace. Right? And we're going to dwell safely even unto the wilderness. This is what Ezekiel is telling them. Keep going. Watch this. And I will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing. And I will cause the shower to come down in his season. There shall be showers of blessing. And the tree of the field shall yield her fruit. And the earth shall yield her increase. And they shall be safe in their land and shall know that I am Yahuwah. When I have That's broken right. the bands of their yoke and delivered them out of the hand of those that serve themselves of them. They shall no more be a prey to the heathen, neither shall the beasts of the land devour them, but they shall dwell safely, and none shall make them afraid. And I will raise up for them a plant of renown, and they shall be I will raise up for them what? A plant of renown. A plant of renown. Keep going. And they shall be no more consumed with hunger in the land, 
neither bear the shame of the heathen anymore. Thus shall they know that I, Yahuwah, their God, am with them, and that they, even the house of Israel, are my people, says Yahuwah. And ye are my All right, people. so he told us very clearly he's going to put his, his servant David as our shepherd, right? And he said he's going to raise up for them a plant of renown, right? The brother T just told us, he said Isaiah told us about the branch of Jesse. Right, let's get it. It's Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1. It won't take us long. It's Isaiah chapter uh, 11, verse 1. Right? Ezekiel told us his, his shepherd, or our shepherd would be uh, David. And then he said he has sent us a plant of renown. Right? We just read Zechariah. Zechariah is talking about he going to send us the branch of David. Right? Now we're about to look at Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1. Right? And we're going to see the different ways that the Most High God has referenced this exact same thing from different prophets all throughout our history. And there shall come forth a rod out of the, out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. So there will be a branch that grows out of the stem of Jesse. Right? Now, those of y'all who've been reading with it for a long time might remember we were in the book of Ruth. Right. And in the book of Ruth, you had a man named Boaz. And this Boaz got with Ruth. And then after that, they ended up having a kid. Which led to a man named Jesse. And Jesse had sons. And one of his sons were named what? David. David. So here where it says out of the branch of Jesse, it's talking about David. We had Zechariah to tell us about David. We had Ezekiel that told us about David. Right? David, a plant of renown. David, a branch. And Jesse, a branch. Let's get Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 23. This is Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 5. Is Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 5. Behold, the days come, says Yahuwah, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and the king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days, Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name whereby he shall be called Yahuwah, our righteousness. Right. So this man will be called Yahuwah, our righteousness. And he is a branch from who? David. A branch of David. All of this is talking about the Messiah. Right. All this is prophesying to the Messiah. So when um, Isaiah said it, Isaiah would have been first saying it. Isaiah would have said it before Israel and Judah was knocked off of the map, right? People may not have knew what he was talking about, right? Then after that, you had uh, Jeremiah say it. Then Ezekiel say it. That's before the temple was destroyed. May not have knew what he was talking about. Now we back to rebuilding the temple and he's telling us the same thing. And now Daniel has had a chance to speak on the matter. And he tells us about the Messiah that's going to come and that's going to be cut off for something that ain't got nothing to do with him, is what the book say. Right? So the, the folks who study scripture at this point with the information that we have at the time of Zechariah, they probably starting to try to put this thing together like, what are the prophets talking about? I remember the other prophets telling me about a plant or a branch from David and from Jesse. Right? So they're trying to put this all back together. Go to uh go back to uh Zechariah.
it's Zechariah. What chapter three should be about the end, right? Verse eight. Is uh Zechariah chapter three verse eight? Watch what the book say. Hear now, o Joshua the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, they are men of of men of wondered. They are men wondered at. For behold, I will bring forth my servant the branch. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua upon the stone shall be seven eyes. Behold, he says seven eyes. Keep I going. Will, I will engrave the graving thereof, says Yahuwah of hosts. And I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. In that day, says you who of hosts, shall you cry every man of his neighbor under the vine and under the fig tree. Keep going. And the angel that talked with me came again and walked, walked and waked me as a man that wakened, that is wakened out of his sleep and said unto me, what seest thou? And I said, I have looked and behold again a candlestick of all gold with a bowl upon the top of it and his seven lamps thereon and seven pipes to the seven lamps which were upon the top thereof and two olive trees by it, one on the upon the right of the bowl and the other on the left side thereof. So I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me saying, what are these, my Lord? And the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, knowest, now, knowest thou not what these be? And I said, no, my Lord. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of Yahuwah unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says Yahuwah of hosts. Right? So understand what he's saying. He said, man, I saw the candlestick, and I got bowls on top of that thing. Them things all lit up. Right? And then there's two olive, olive trees right next to it. Right? And he asked, he was like, what does all this mean? What I'm looking at? Because you remember, he having a vision. Zechariah, he having a vision of this stuff. The angel told him, oh, you don't know what that means? He's like, no, that's why I asked you. Andrew was like, oh, well, not by might. Or by what? Nor by power. Nor by power. But by my spirit. Right? So Zachariah probably looking like, okay, all right, hold on. Okay. What that mean, though? You know what I'm saying? Watch it. Keep going. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain. And he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace unto it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands He said, The hands of Zerubbabel have done what? Laid the foundation of this house. Uh-huh. And his hands shall also finish it. He said, And his hands shall do what? Also finish it. What does that sound like? It's all like y'all shoot. Sound like y'all sure, don't it? Right? Go uh go to uh duh, 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 duh. go to Revelation chapter 22, verse mm, I don't know. Verse 9, maybe. Revelation chapter 22, verse 9, maybe. <laughs> He said, yeah. not by uh, might and not by power, but by my sword. I mean, by my uh, spirit, he said. All right? That's important to understand. It, man, the deception that I believe that's going to come our way. And note, just understand why I say this stuff. I'm not saying it because I'm a prophet or the most High God gave me a vision. Only based off of this book. I feel it's important for me to keep repeating that. Right, because I want us to understand the power that's in this book. Right, I have nothing against a prophet, I have nothing against a man of God, but I believe that when we see a man of God, we're gonna know we saw a man of God. When we see when we see a, a prophet, when we see a seer, we're gonna know that we saw a prophet. It's not gonna be any questions, it's not gonna be like, Oh, is that a prophet or not? I think we're gonna know that we're seeing something special. Right, I want y'all to know there's stuff in this book. That will enlighten us. That will let us know what's coming. I believe it. Right? He's telling us that we have some stuff coming our way. It's going to be some deception coming our way. So we have to make sure that we have a good understanding of what this book says. Because when we do, 
can't nobody lie to us. You can't lie to us if we understand what the book is saying. Right. Our problem is we don't have a great understanding of the book. So anybody can kind of say anything and we got to be like, well, maybe that's true. Right. When we didn't know nothing about religion and this, that and other, somebody could pop on TV. Right. And they could say, well, all religions are the same. It's, it's really just each culture putting a spin on it that fits their culture. But the main the main the main message is the same. You could believe that until you start looking into all religions. Once you start digging into all these religions, you quickly realize they do not have the same message. They are not saying the same thing. And there is not one of them that's even remotely close. Even the ones that try to take from our stuff, our Old Testament, our scriptures, right? Talking about Islam, Judaism, Christianity. If you take all three of those, which are based off of our scriptures, they're still not like what the Most High God gave us. Right? This stuff is not the same. These people lie to us when they say it. But when you don't know for yourself, when you haven't read the Quran, right? When you haven't looked into the Hinduism stuff, when you haven't read what Buddha had to say, when you're looking at this stuff, you would know you're looking like, oh, yeah, good point. That sounds about right. Seems logical to me. And you just go with it. That happens with everything. People just say stuff. And when you don't know the truth, when you don't, when that thing don't violate truth to you, when it's like, whoa, that can't be right because the Most High God said don't do that. When you got that in you, you can make ease of everything. It's just like, oh, no, that's a lie. Sure, that, that may be your experience, but that's a sin. You know what I'm saying? Like, whatever it is, you can line it up with the book and then you can make a determination of should I go after it or should I don't. The whole world becomes simple to you. It's all in this book, right? We keep understanding this book. The whole world is simple to us if we obey it. Keep going. This is uh this is uh Revelation chapter 22, verse what, 19? Nine? You said nine. Nine? Give me nine. Let me see what nine said. Then said he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant and thy brother of uh and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Worship God. And he said unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He right. That... He said, if you unjust, let you still, let you stay that way. I'm telling you, the men of God that we read about in this book, they prayer is different from ours. We be looking like, oh God, please forgive everybody. You know what I'm saying? He said, he said if you unjust, stay that way. Right? Keep going. Watch this. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. Mm -hmm. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. That's right. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Mm -hmm. And behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. Give every man according to his thoughts. Of his work. Give every man according to how he feel. How much he tried. How he did the best he could. How ain't nobody, ain't nobody perfect. Give everybody... According to his darn works, whatever your output is, whatever behavior you actually have, that's what you're going to get back. Y'all is not mocked. Let these people lie to us. Make us all docile. Think this stuff is a joke. Think we got a plenty of time to figure it out. If your eyes open and you put your eyes on one of these videos or you put your eyes in the book or you put your eyes on another man of God that's teaching the truth, right? You ought to look at that, man. You are just like uh, just like the uh, most High just told Joshua. You are brand plucked out, of, plucked out of the fire. You was about to be burnt up and you got pulled out of the fire. That's what it means when you when you finally start to under truth, whether you find the, you under truth, understand the truth through the book yourself, whether you get it from a man of God or however you get it. Right. You just got plucked out of fire. It's that close. Keep going. Watch this. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do the commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life and enter into the gates into the city. Right? So he told you, I am Alpha and I am Omega, the beginning and the end. What he's trying to tell you is, I'm Zerubbabel. Right? My hand laid a foundation. 
and I'm going to set the capstone. In other words, I'm going to put the first stone down and I'm going to put the last stone down. The beginning and the end. Let's go back. This is Zechariah. Where we leave off? Zechariah chapter 4, verse what? Uh, verse 9. Right? Zechariah chapter 4 this is verse 9. Right? It's Zerubbabel is testifying to Yahushua. He put the first stone down and he put the last one. Right? That's signifying of what Yahushua is going to do for us. The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hand shall also finish it. And thou shalt know that the Yahuwah of hosts has sent me unto you. For with for who hath despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with, the, with those seven. They are the eyes of Yahuwah which run to and fro through the whole earth. Then answered I and said unto him, What are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof? Now, right? again. So now remember, Zerubbabel asked, he is like, okay, I see the candlestick and this bowl on top of it and these two olive trees. What does that mean? Andrew's asking, like, you don't know what that means? Like, no, that's why I just asked you what it means. What does it mean? Andrew told him, oh, man, look, not by might, not by power, by my spirit, says you. Zerubbabel like, oh, okay. Right? Then he start telling them, you know what I'm saying? Your hand gonna lay down the foundation, and it's going and you gonna and you gonna finish off the work, right? So Zerubbabel looking like, man, you a fast talking angel, but okay, but tell me, what do the olive trees mean, right? Watch this, because really the angel ain't told him nothing. That in his mind, the angel ain't told him nothing. Watch this, keep going. Then answer I and said unto him, What are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof? And I answered again and said unto him what be these two olive branches which through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil out of out of themselves and he answered me and said you see how he I'm had to keep you. asking he had to keep asking right but now the angel finally answered him watch this knowest thou not what these be and i said no my lord then he said then said he these are the two anointed ones that stand by yahuwah of the whole earth these are the two anointed ones that stand by Yahuwah. What? Of the whole earth. Right? Revelation tell us the two prophets that's going to come. Maybe this is maybe it's re referencing the same thing. We don't really know. We're going to wait and see. Right? But Revelation tell us there will be two prophets that come. Right? That didn't die. And they're going to die and they're going to be resurrected in front of everybody. Right, it's gonna be some. It's gonna be wild stuff that we see. A lot of stuff that people run in their mouth, like, "Oh man, this stuff ain't real. This stuff is fake." You know what I'm saying? This that another. That stuff is just allegory. All this stuff. A lot of people gonna see some wild stuff, and immediately when they see it, it's gonna become normal. That's the crazy thing to me. We can sit up here and be all emphatic about what ain't real. Ain't nobody ever walked on water. I ain't never seen nothing like that. The world couldn't have been created in six days. We could, we can emphatically say all this stuff because we haven't experienced it. And then as soon as we experience something that we've never experienced before, guess what? That becomes normal now. You know what I'm saying? All the, all the days of all that can't be done and that's not real and this, that, and the other, all that is behind you. Right? There's so many things in, in the world that people imagine could not be done that it was impossible and then it happens and you never hear about it you just never hear about how it couldn't be done and all that matter of fact you don't even you you stop congratulating the person that accomplished it you stop congratulating them all the time you just forget all about it it just becomes normal you want to think you take simple stuff you do you think that anybody in the 70s thought that there would be anybody that could shoot the three ball like Steph Curry. If you would have told them that fool, they would have been like, man, please, can't nobody do no foolish. That's crazy. And now we see it every day. And not only do we see it every day, everybody shoots the three ball like Steph Curry now. LeBron out there hitting them things. That boy, you know what I'm saying? He sucked. <laughs> that boy trash. You know what I'm saying? 
That boy, he hitting him down. I'm like, everybody can shoot the three ball now. That would have been something that in the 70s, in the 60s, we would have looked at like, that's impossible. What do you mean somebody going to be shooting almost 50% for three? 40-something percent from three. That don't make sense. And they taking how many threes a game? These boy taking seven threes a game. What? I mean, making seven threes a game. What? They would have said that is impossible. Doesn't make sense. Preposterous. And it's normal now. And you can go down the list. There's so many things like that. And that's how it's going to be. We're going to see some stuff. And as soon as we see it, it's going to be normal. Everybody's going to be like, yeah, no, that, that was in the Bible. Now, I already knew that was going to happen. And the same people a week before that was like, man, ain't nothing like that ever going to happen. Please, that stuff is allegory. That's what happens. That is what happens. Right? Let's go back. It's Zachariah. I feel naked without my chat. Anybody ask some questions? No. Is Zachariah give me uh what verse? Mm. We are on four. Uh, we are on five, chapter five. All right, this is Zachariah, chapter five, verse one. Then I turned and lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a flying roll. And he said unto me, What seest thou? And I answered. Think of a flying roll as like a, a, fly, a flying, but you know, you know, in the movies, they got the rolls of paper, and then you roll it out. You know what I'm saying? You just roll out the way. So think of that. You know what I'm saying? You got a roll. It's a flying piece of paper, right? Keep going. Mm. And he said unto me, What seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying roll. The length thereof is twenty cubits, and the breadth thereof ten cubits. Then said he unto me, This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. For everyone that still still is shall be cut off as on this side according to it. And everyone that swears shall be cut off as on that side according to it. I will I will bring it forth, says he who of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief, into the house of him that swears falsely by my name, and it shall remain in the midst of this house of his house, and shall consume it with the timber thereof and the stones thereof. Then the angel that talked with me went forth and said unto me, Lift up now thine eyes and see what this that goeth forth. And I said, What is it? And he said, This is the ephah that goes forth. He said, moreover, this is their resemblance throughout all the earth. And behold, there was there was lift up a talent of lead. And this is a woman that sitteth in the midst of the ephah. And he said, this is wickedness. And he cast it into the midst of the ephah and he cast the weight of lead upon the mouth thereof. Then lift up mine eyes and looked and behold, there came out two women and the one and the wind was in their wings. For they had wings like the wings of a stork. And they lift up the ephod between the earth and the heaven. Then said I to the angel that talked with me, whether do these bear the ephod? And he said unto me to build it a house in the land of Shinar, and it shall be established and set there upon her own base. All right. There's a lot of these prophecies, these rapid fire and prophecies at us. All right. All this stuff. I'm not going to tell you I got these figured out yet. Right. All these things mean something, right? These are the ones that nobody's paying attention to, right? But when he's saying the, line, the land of Shinar, the land of Shinar, there's a lot of stuff happening in that part of the world right now, right? So we never know. We just have to pay attention to what's going on, be mindful of all of these prophecies. And as we see things unfold, it's not so that we can predict it. It's not because we think we can be prepared. As soon as you get to thinking you can be prepared for something, Most High God going to make a fool out of you. The only way to prepare is to serve the Most High God and to do his word. Right? Did you keep these things in mind so that when you see him, you can give y'all glory and say, man, he called it before it happened. 
Shine on. Just like he said it was gonna happen, it happened. Keep going. Shine art in Babylon, eh? Yeah. Uh yeah. Well, yeah, near there, yeah. And I turned and lift up mine eyes and looked, and behold, there came four chariots out from between two mountains, and the mountains were mountains of brass. In the first chariot were red horses, and in the second chariot, black horses, and in the third chariot, white horses, and in the fourth chariot, grizzled and bay horses. Then I answered and said unto the angel that talked with me, What are these, my lord? And the angel answered and said unto me, These are the four spirits of the heavens which go forth from standing before you who are of the lord of all the earth the black horses which are therein go forth into the north country and the white go forth after them and the grizzled go toward the south country and the bay went forth and sought to go that they might walk to and fro to the earth and he said get ye hence walk to and fro to the earth so they walked to and fro through the earth then cried he upon me and spake unto me saying behold these that go toward the north country have quieted my spirit in the north country and the word of Yahuwah came unto me, saying, Take of them of the captivity, even the Heldai and Tobijah, and for the and of Jedediah, which are come from Babylon, and come thou the same day, and go into the house of Josiah, the son of Zephaniah. Then take silver and gold, and make crowns, and set them upon the head of Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh Yahuwah of hosts, saying, Behold, the man whose name is the branch. He shall grow up out of his place and he shall build the temple of Yahuwah. Right? So pay attention. You had a man named Yahushua, right? Joshua. His name, his name is Yahushua. He's the high priest, and they put a crown on his head and said, The man named the branch, who we understand to be the branch of David, the branch of Jesse, right? He's going to do what now? Thus speaketh Yahuwah of hosts, saying, Behold, the man whose name is the branch, and he shall grow up out of his place and shall build the temple of Yahuwah. Even he shall build the temple of Yahuwah, and he shall bear the glory and shall sit and rule upon his throne. And he shall be a priest upon his throne, and the council of peace shall be between them both. The crown shall be... So that's the prophecy right there, that Yahushua had to be both priest and king. Right? So when we look at that, we look at, you got to imagine the people who look at Yahushua when he was walking around, you got to look at it like, uh, you don't look much like a king to me. And you're not presenting yourself as a priest. A lot of times we look at what we look at in the Bible and we look at, oh, you stupid Pharisees, you stupid Sadducees. But this stuff is not easy. A lot of us, if we were living, would have made similar or worse decisions. It's not easy to figure this stuff out. The most I got ain't laying it out for you. Our problem is we try to predict the same way that the Pharisees was trying to do. They was trying to predict it. They're looking like, no, nah, I know he's going to come this way or come that way. Instead of predicting it, let it play out. Y'all remember in Acts, Gamaliel, right? Teacher of the law, doctor of the law, the books say, right? Everybody else was like, man, kill the disciples. Those are the disciples of Yahweh, you will kill them, boys. They keep spreading this nonsense around the city. And then Gamaliel stopped him. He was like, hey, everybody relax now. Y'all remember the other boy that was running around here talking about he is the Messiah. And what happened to him? He had a, you know, a little small following. It came to nothing. There's the next one. He had a big following. He came to nothing too. Them boy dead and gone. He was like, now, if we find ourselves fighting against these boys and they actually are of God, then we fight against God. But if we do nothing, just let it play out, they'll fizzle out on their own. Right? That's wisdom. That comes from somebody who understands and knows the law. He didn't believe in Yahushua. He didn't buy this foolishness. He is looking at it like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know nothing about that. The Messiah, him? He didn't, he didn't, he didn't go along with that stuff, but he was still wise enough to say, let's just wait and see. Let's just see how these things happen. I ain't about to kill E boy, because I mean, for what? Right? And that has to be our mindset. Our mindset got to be, let's just wait and see. We ain't got to be too hasty. We ain't got to be the first one to know it. All that stuff is pride. 
That's all that is pride. Oh, I got to be the first to teach it. I got to be the first to know it. I got to be the only one. I can't tell nobody I don't know because they might stop following me. That's pride. Pride. Your favorite thing when you read this book should be I don't know if you really don't know. And if you know, then don't hide on what you're saying. Say what you know. Right? Don't be scared to be called out and be wrong. If somebody tell you wrong, you're like, oh, you're right. Now I know. Right? But that's what it's about. It's about understanding the prophecy, being familiar with it, when it comes to you, seeing it, and the glory goes to the most high God. That's it. All right? Keep going. And the crown shall be to Helene and Tobijah and to Jedediah and the hen and to Hen, the son of Zephaniah, for a memorial in the temple of Yahuwah. And they that are far off shall come and build in the temple of Yahuwah, and ye shall know that Yahuwah of hosts has sent me unto you. This shall right. come they that are far off shall what? Shall come and build in the temple of Yahuwah, and ye shall know that Yahuwah of hosts has sent me unto you. And right. This... They think right now, they think that this is talking about Zerubbabel. They think that this is talking about Joshua. Not at all. It's talking about us. At some point, we from afar off, along with Gentiles, with the Gentiles' resources, are going to build the temple. Right? When it say Yahushua was going to build the temple, the prophecy about Yahushua building the temple, it's talking about his body being resurrected. Right? Keep going. Chapter 7. Chapter 7, verse 1. And it came to pass in the fourth year of King Darius that the word of Yahuwah came unto Zechariah in an adamant stone. Lest they should hear the oh, law. Actually, actually, let's hold Lord, off right there. My bad. So, let's go back to uh, Ezra. Yeah, we in the fourth year of Darius now, so let's go back to Ezra, and this is Ezra chapter 5. This is Ezra chapter 5, verse 1. Watch what the book say. Then the prophets Haggai, the prophet, and then the prophets... Haggai, the prophet, and Zechariah, the son of Iddo, prophesied unto the Jews that were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of God of Israel, in the name of God of Israel, even unto them. Then rose up Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, and began to build the house of God, which is at Jerusalem. And with them were the prophets of God helping them. At the time, at the same time, came to them Tatnai, governor of the side of the river, and Shethar Balsnai and their companions and said unto them who has commanded you to build this house and to make up this wall then said we unto them after this manner what are the names of the men that make this building for the eye of their god was upon the elders of the jews that they could not cause them to cease till the matter came to darius and then they returned answer by letter concerning this matter the copy of the letter that tetni governor on this side of the river and shethar bosni and his companions the Arpak Shadites, which were on the side of the river, sent unto Darius the king. They sent now a remember, to him. these are the same Gentiles, the same group at least, of Gentiles that came to us the first time and they said, yo, 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 can we help? We told them, no, you can't help us. You don't have nothing to do with this. Then they wrote a letter to the king, right? And when they wrote that letter to the king, the king responded and said, yeah, this is a rebellious people. I look through all the records. These people do cause insurrection. Tell them stop. Tell them don't build nothing until I give them commandment to build it. That king died. Now you have another king that came into place and we in the second year of his kingdom. So they came back to us because we start building because the most high God came to us through the prophets and told us to start building. Right. We shouldn't start building unless we got authority to build. And that authority got to come from whoever got authority over the land we in. Or the most high God himself. If it don't, if the authority don't come from either of those places, then we shouldn't be going against it. Not in the name of the most high God, at least, right? So now we start building again. So they come back, they look like, yo, 
I thought the king told you y'all can't build until we say so. Who gave y'all this authority? We told him, look, man, you know what I'm saying? Whose name is on the bill? You know what I'm saying? Like, what you mean? We got our authority come from the most high God. Right? So then now they like, well, we about to write a letter. Right? They write another letter to the new king. Well, I'll try to go. And his companions, the Afarshakites, which were on this side of the river, sent unto Darius the king. They sent a letter unto him wherein was written thus, unto Darius the king, all peace. Be it known unto the king that we went into the province of Judah to the house of the great God, which is builded with great stones and timber is laid in the walls and the work goeth fast on and prospereth in their hands. Then asked we of those elders and said unto them thus, who commanded you to build this house and to make up these walls? We asked their names also to certify thee that we might write the names of the men that were the chief of them. And thus they returned us answer, us an answer saying, we are the servants of the God of heaven and earth and build this house that was built these many years ago, which a great king of Israel built and set up. But after that, our fathers have provoked the God of heaven unto wrath. He gave them to the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, the Chaldean, who destroyed this house and carried the people away into Babylon. But in the first year of Cyrus, the king of Babylon, the same king Cyrus made a decree to build this house of God. And the vessels also of gold and silver in the house of God, which Nebuchadnezzar took out of the temple that was in Jerusalem and brought them into the temple of Babylon. Those did Cyrus, the king, take out of the temple of Babylon that were delivered unto one whose name was Sheshbazzar, whom he had made governor and said unto him, take these vessels, go carry them into the temple that is in Jerusalem and let the house of God be builded in this place. Then came the same Sheshbazzar and laid the foundation of the house of God, which is in Jerusalem. And since that time, even until now, has it been in building, and yet it is not finished. Now, therefore, if it seem good to the king, let there be a search made in the king's treasure house, which is there at Babylon, whether it be so, that the decree was made of Cyrus, the king, to build the house of God at Jerusalem, and let the king send his pleasure to us concerning this matter. Right, so we got to write our own letter, or at least uh, have our own message delivered in the letter, and the king read it. So now watch how the king took it. Then Darius the king made a decree and search was made in the house of the rose where the treasures were laid up in Babylon. And there was found at Akmetha in the place that is in the province of the Medes a roll. And therein was a record thus written in the first. Year right. So they was, found it. Right. The king was like, OK, we told the king, we was like, go ahead and search your records. You'll see what we're talking about. Right. And the king went out. He looked at it. And in the land of the Medes, they found a roll. Let's hear it. In the first year of Cyrus, the king, the same Cyrus, the king made a decree concerning the house of God at Jerusalem that the house be builded. The place where they offer sacrifices and let the foundation thereof be strongly laid. The height thereof, 60 cubits and the breadth thereof, 60 cubits. With three rows of great stones and a row of new timber and let the ex expenses be given out of the king's house and also let the gold and the silver vessels of the house of God, which Nebuchadnezzar took from out of the temple, which is at Jerusalem and brought unto Babylon, be restored and brought again into the temple, which is at Jerusalem. Everyone in his place placed him in the house of God. Now, therefore, Tetnai, governor beyond the river, Shethar Bosnai and your companions, the Afarshakites, which are beyond the river, be ye far from thence. Let the work of this house of God alone. Let the governor of the Jews and the elders of the Jews build the house of God in his place. Moreover, I make a decree. What ye shall do to the elders of the Jews for the building of this house of God, that of the king's goods, even of the tribute beyond the river, forthwith expenses be given to these men, that they be not hindered. And that which they need of both young bullocks, rams, lambs, and burnt offerings of, for, of the God of heaven, what wheat, salt, wine, and oil, according to the appointment of the priests, which are Jerusalem, let it be given to them day by day without fail. That they right. So not only is he giving us approval to then begin building or, or to keep building, but now he said, I'll pay for the whole thing, whatever y'all need and whatever y'all need to do y'all sacrifices. I'll take care of that. Take it out of my bank. Right. Keep going. 
Also, I have made a decree that whosoever shall alter this word, let timber be pulled down from his house and being set up, let him be hanged thereon and let his house be made a dunghill for this. The God right, so he said, if anybody go against this, right, anybody try to stand in the way of this, we gonna take a beam out of your house. So in other words, your house gonna fall over once we take the, the, the stabilization from it. And then you gonna get hung on that same beam. Right, keep going. The God... And the God that has caused his name to dwell there, destroy all kings and people that shall put their hand to alter and destroy this house of God, which is at Jerusalem. I, mm -hmm. Darius, has made a decree that it be done with speed. And Tetnai, governor on this side of the river, Shethar, Bosnai, and their companions, according to that which Darius the king had sent, so they did speedily. And the elders of the Jews built it, and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Iddo. And they built it and finished it according to the commandment of God of Israel and according to the commandment of Cyrus and Darius and Artaxerxes, king of Persia. And this house was finished on the third day of the month, Adar, which is in the sixth year of the reign of Darius the king. And the children of Israel, the priests and the Levites and the rest of the children of the company kept the dedication of the house of God with joy. And they offered the dedication of this house of God, a hundred bullocks, 200 rams, 400 lambs, and for a sin offering, for all Israel, 12 he goats, according to the number of the tribes of Israel. And they set the priests in their divisions and the Levites in their courses for their service of God, which is at Jerusalem, as it is written in the book of Moses. And the children of the captivity kept the Passover until the 14th day of the first month. For the priests and Levites were purified together. All of them were pure and killed the Passover for all the children of the captivity and for their brethren, the priests, and for themselves. And the children of Israel, which were come again out of the captivity, and all such as had separated themselves unto them, unto them for the fulfill for so for the okay. for the filthiness of the heathen of the land to seek Yahuwah, the God of Israel, did eat and kept the feast of unleavened bread seven days with joy for the for Yahuwah had made them joyful and turned their heart and turned the heart of the king of Assyria unto them to strengthen their hands in the work of the house of God, the God of Israel. All right. So now that's our little happy, you know what I'm saying? That's our happy beginning, or happy end of the beginning, right? So the, the the it's telling us and it's describing how the temple got finished. So now next, uh give me verse one of uh chapter six. Let me see. Now after these things in the reign of Artaxerxes, king of Persia, Ezra the son of Sarai. There we go. Okay. So now this is where Ezra pop on the scene. So so far, Ezra haven't been there. Ezra is a priest himself, right? So we we going next week when we read we going to read about uh Ezra and how he popped on the scene. And how things started to play out when he got on the scene. So this is just really the the end of the beginning for us, right? There's a whole lot more that, that has to play out, but this is how the temple got rebuilt. Right? It was because the king gave us resources. We was already starting to do it, but the king gave us resources and gave us everything we needed to start our sacrifices and to keep things consistent. Right? bringing us out of the land of our captivity. All right, any questions? All right, well, let's pray out. I can't see the questions in the chat, y'all. So I get y'all on the fellowship call or just email. Questions.